from before and we've come two hiking groups picked by the main feature of the hike, a swim across Golden's Asia. There she drowned, not observed by the other swimmers. She left her immediate family, Teresa, Lydia, and Manfred, her parents, Ivana and Ivan, her sister, Katerina, with her husband, Gregory, and her two nieces, Annika and Sofia, as well as her mother-in-law, Anna, and sister and brother-in-law, Gerlinde and Jürgen, as well as many diverse friends that cannot comprehend her much too early death. Her ashes were spread at the cemetery of her hometown in Pode Podebradi, according to her wishes, at the place where the remains of her beloved grandmother, Lida, were scattered. I would like to uh, invite now on stage all the people who wanted to share a few words with us. And I would like, I, I will invite each person, I will call each person by their names and they will come one by one on stage to share their, their thoughts with us. And I would like to invite first Manfred, Susanna's husband. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank ich mache das hier ins Licht gehen hier. Im Jahre 1993, wir lebten in Austin, Texas, habe ich meine Green Card beantragt. Das sollte ziemlich einfach sein, war ich doch mit einer Amerikanerin verheiratet. Wir gingen also zu dem Immigration Officer in San Antonio und die erste Frage war, wo wir uns denn kennengelernt haben. Wir antworteten wie aus einem Munde, ich sagte in Buffalo, sie sagte in Tübingen, Germany. <lacht> Der besetzt sehr nette Beamte runzelte die Stirn und wollte eine Erklärung haben. Ich hatte eigentlich recht. Ich war im Jahr 88, 1988 für einige Wochen in den USA. Und die letzte Station war ein, eine, eine Computerlinguistik-Tagung in Buffalo. Es gab irgendwo außerhalb der Stadt ein Konferenzdinner und wir wurden in Bussen in die Stadt zurückgefahren. Ich saß im Bus, es war nur noch ein Platz neben mir frei. Da kam eine sehr attraktive Studentin herein und ich habe sofort gesehen, dass sie sich neben mich sitzen musste. Es gab keine andere Möglichkeit. Wir waren gleich in einem sehr anregenden Gespräch vertieft. Sie war im Organisationsteam der Konferenz, sie war eine Tschechin, da was sie schon damals eine Schwäche hatte, und sie bewunderte meine altmodische Ledertasche. <lacht> sie schlug vor, dass wir einen Tag nach äh, äh, Toronto fahren sollten, dazu hatte ich leider keine Zeit, wir haben aber unsere Adressen ausgetauscht. Susanna, um die es hier geht, hatte aber auch recht mit ihrer Antwort. Ein Jahr später, im August 89, hat sie mich nämlich in Tübingen am Ende einer Reise äh, nach Tschechien und, und Jugoslawien. Sie hatte die Ankunft ein, zwei Wochen hinausgezögert, weil sie sich nicht sicher war, dass wir uns, äh, weil sie sich sicher war, dass wir uns ineinander verlieben würden. Ich war mir eigentlich auch ziemlich sicher, war aber wegen dieses Hinauszögerns etwas besorgt. Dann ist sie angekommen mit dem Zug in einem weißen Kleid, das von der Reise aber ziemlich leckig war und mit Rucksack. Wir sind in dieser wunderbaren spazieren gegangen und haben uns tatsächlich sofort ineinander verliebt. Die Musik von Miles Davis, die wir vorhin auch noch gehört haben, war dafür auch ganz wesentlich und sie hat uns in den ersten Jahren wirklich oft begleitet. Der Beamte in San Antonio jedenfalls war mit dieser Erklärung zufrieden und ich habe meine Green Card bekommen. Susanna ist dann noch im selben Jahr im Herbst nach Tübingen gekommen und hat hier auch gleich eine Stelle bei IBM in Stuttgart gefunden und ihr Boss sitzt auch hier. Das ist äh, sehr schön, ein schöner Kreis. Ähm, blöd war aber, dass ich drauf und dran war, eine Stelle in den USA anzunehmen. Aber diese Fern hat äh, unserer Beziehung gut getan. Also sie hat sie vertieft. Wiederum ermöglicht durch E-Mail, wir haben das meiste von, von äh, unserer äh, Korrespondenz ausgedruckt auf Lochpapier noch heute. 
Ich bin Susanne und vieles dankbar. Wir waren vom Charakter sicher nicht ähnlich und machen Dinge sogar sehr verschieden. Aber wir haben uns gerade, gerade deshalb wunderbar ergänzt und auch gegenseitig gefordert. Sie ist mit mir nach Texas gegangen. Also wir haben ein, ein unvergessliches Jahr in Stanford erlebt. Sie hat unsere Umsiedlung nach Berlin unterstützt und auch die Entscheidung, doch nicht nach Massachusetts zu gehen, wo ihre Familie lebt, sondern hier zu bleiben. In dem Nachruf könnt ihr alle mehr, und wir haben schon gehört, über Susanne, über uns, uns beide erfahren. Meine Tochter Lydia und meine Tochter Theresa äh, und über anderes nachlesen. Äh, ich will das hier nicht wiederholen, will vielmehr zwei Charaktereigenschaften näher beschreiben. Eine war ihre ungeheure Neugier auf Menschen. Susanne hatte keine Scheu, Unbekannte anzusprechen und in ein Gespräch zu verwickeln. Ich weiß noch, wie wir in Austin im Restaurant unsere Gouverneurin Ann Richards, das war die vor, vor George W. Bush, gesehen hat und dann gleich bei ihr am Tisch gesessen war. Ja. Etwas Ähnliches ist in Prag mit Václav Havel passiert. Auch da war sie gleich mit dabei und durfte sich auch an den Tisch setzen. Ja. Im Katharinenkloster auf dem Sinai hat sie einen, ich nenne ihn mal Unterabt, so bezirrt, dass er ihr die Hand der heiligen Katharina gezeigt hat, die sonst nur einmal im Jahr öffentlich zu sehen ist. Und in Berlin waren wir bei einer Aufführung von Karl-Heinz Stockhausen Stück Inori. Der Komponist selbst war am Mischpult und nach dem Konzert ist sie sofort auf ihn zugegangen und hat ihn in eine angeregte Plauderei verwickelt. Sie hat mich dann hinzugerufen, ich wäre vor Scham fast versunken, aber wir hatten dann doch eine, eine nette, ein nettes Gespräch und ich kenne also auf diese Weise Karin Stockhausen persönlich. Eine andere Eigenschaft war ihre Neugier auf die Welt. Sie hat Reisen sehr geliebt und wir haben uns in den 33 Jahren viele Länder angeschaut. Wir waren dabei in einfachen Hotels und es war fast unmöglich, Susanne auch nur zu einer Taxifahrt zu überreden. Sie wollte die Menschen dieser Länder kennenlernen, wollte das Alltägliche erfahren. Wir sind viel zu Fuß gegangen und gewandert, wobei sie eine tiefe Abneigung dagegen hatte, denselben Weg zurückzugehen. Nun ist das nicht immer gut möglich, wenn es nur einen Weg gibt. Und ich kann mich noch gut erinnern, wie wir uns einmal zwei, drei Stunden in der Wildernis von Nordmexiko beim Copper Canyon völlig verlaufen hatten. Aber meine Töchter sagen, dass ihre Navigationsgabe besser war als meine. Äh, diese Sucht auf neue Menschen und neue Orte kann leicht verstanden werden. Man kann sie leicht so verstehen, dass sie unzuverlässig war. Es stimmt, sie hat viele Freundschaften gehabt und nicht immer so gepflegt, wie sie wollte, weil es ja so viel Neues gab. Aber in den wichtigen Dingen war sie absolut zuverlässig. Das galt für die Familie, das galt für ihren Beruf. Als Computerwissenschaftlerin und Data Scientist hat sie da verschiedenen Firmen äh, gearbeitet, zuletzt bei T-Systems und sie hat sich mit dieser Arbeit sehr identifiziert. Und auch da hat sie Kollegen zusammengebracht. Äh, wir haben äh, Kondolenzschreiben noch aus ihrer Zeit aus Texas bekommen und zuletzt hat sie ein Team aus Indien angeleitet und war dort, wie ich höre, sehr beliebt. Auf einer unserer Reisen in Peru bei Machu Picchu habe ich sie einmal vor dem Tod retten können. Einige von euch wissen diese Geschichte. Dieses Mal war ich zu weit weg. Aber wir haben sie auf ihrer letzten Reise dorthin begleitet, wo sie ihre Asche verstreut haben wollte. Es, nahm, es war nämlich ihr fester Wunsch, in der Geburtsstadt Podegravi zurückzukehren in, 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 und dort begraben zu werden. Wenn es einen Grabstand für sie gäbe, dann stünde darauf, in life you were restless, but now rest in peace. Um, hi, I'm Katharina Hung, Susanna's sister, and I'm very nervous. I'm not a professional public speaker like Manfred is. <laughs> um, And it's going to be a little tricky. We couldn't print out my speech today. The printer broke. Bad timing. So I had to um, Therese the videos I've had. Um, so first, I want to thank you all so much for coming here um, to be with us today on this sad occasion. 
that none of us expected to be experiencing anytime soon. For those of you that were able to come here today to Berlin, we are very grateful for your presence. For the family and friends that are watching at home, um, that, um, that, and, and Susanna has many friends around the world that couldn't be here today, we thank you from the bottom of your heart for all of the love and support and kind words and actions you have shown us in the past couple of months. They have helped us get through these difficult times. Um, I have been feeling profound and intense sadness about her unexpected and tragic death. She was my big sister. I am so grateful that I had a big sister. Not everyone is so blessed. I'm also grateful we were very close, grateful for the open relationship we had. There was no topic that was off limits or inappropriate in our eyes. We were sisters. Of course, there were times we disagreed and argued, but a minute later we'd be laughing hysterically about something else and all was good again. In the past few years, we stayed in daily contact on our phones. Zoo loved to send me quick little telegram video messages. Watching them now is very difficult, but I'm happy that I have them. Our relationship was always a little bit upside down. The big sister and I was the little sister, but it seemed more often than not that it was me reminding her we'd miss the train or the plane if we didn't hurry. <laughs> me telling her it was late and we should go to bed already. Me reminding her that we should try to get eight hours of sleep each night. I did feel in the past couple of years that she was pushing herself even more than before, running or biking for hours on end, always restless. She craved intensive experiences. I felt a little boring around her. I was happy to stay at home with my knitting. I was hoping she would settle down a little bit now too, perhaps try singing again. She had taken opera singing lessons in the 90s and she sang really nicely. Mozart's Boce Sapeta ringing out in my Cambridge condo is a great memory. One doesn't realize how difficult and taxing opera singing is until they sing it up close, until they see it up close. I'm grateful that she always made me feel like I had my act together and was doing well with my kids and my job and my marriage. Thank you, Susie. Life was life with Susanna was never boring, never orderly, never dull. You were always thrown into some unexpected adventure. It was hard to forget. I'm grateful for the many trips we took together throughout our lives, which are the source of most of my fondest memories of Susanna. First with our parents when we were kids. When we arrived in America, the first thing my dad was my dad did was buy a car, a two-door Chevy Malibu with a 350 engine. It was more like a race car than a car for family trips. Back then the speed limit was much higher than it is today, and we went fast. We had um, fun going on camping trips around Ohio with our other Czech friends. How we, all, how we fit all of our camping stuff into such a small car, I'm not sure. We drove from Ohio to Miami Beach in the winter a few times, and of course went to Disneyland in Florida. I declared it the best day of my life. When I graduated from college, I took a two month backpacking trip alone through Europe with a Eurail Pass. I had a great time, but of course the biggest adventures came when Susanna joined me at the end of the trip for a week or two. Sleeping overnight on the ground in front of the Venice train station with hundreds of other backpackers was very memorable. That actually was my idea. I was starting to run out of money and I thought it would be fun. Gawking at the beautiful statue of David in Florence, going to a hip disco in Paris, where apparently it was commonplace for topless go-go dancers to dance on pedestals around the club. None of the couples in the disco seemed to notice them much, but we were astonished. Our, fit, our first trip back to the Czech Republic in 1989, where we saw our grandfather and cousins and aunts, was very emotional. We got in some trouble for, taking, for talking in the informal two um, 
way of speaking with a border control agent and for taking their pictures. Um, but we had a lot of fun. That was still under communism. So shortly after that trip, Sue visited Manfred in Germany. She fell in love and that was it. Later came trips to Austin, which I really loved, watching their schnauzer dog, Bashek, and their kitty cat play together and cuddle together was so cute. I've never seen a cat and a dog do that before. And then going to the Oasis, the ski shores in Austin, and going to the San Antonio River Walk. Um, Susanna and Manfred also took me to a Texas two-step dance hall where no one sits out a dance. Everyone dances all night long. Um, I wish that Susanna had warned me about that beforehand, though, because I happened to wear a super short, super tight dress, which kept riding up as I danced with all these strangers. And Susanna laughed hysterically as she kept seeing me yank it down, so, you know, everybody couldn't <laughs> see my underwear. Um, also, driving with her to Waco, Texas, about three or four hours away, to go to a Czech festival. And when we arrived, we were shocked to see that there was not a single, like, actual Czech person anywhere but besides <laughs> us. <laughs> then a trip to California the, the year they lived in Palo Alto, California. That vacation ended with my sister reserving a couple of days at the Harbin Hot Springs Resort. That sounded great, except Susanna didn't mention to my mother that it was an all-nude resort. <laughs> So my mother refused to participate in that until 11 or 12 o'clock at night, and finally she said, okay, and took it all off. After the kids came and she moved to Germany, the trips were different, but still fun. Jet lag is hard for adults, but for two young babies, I have twin, twins, um, it was not very easy. But Berlin was great, great museums, there's Cleopatra, operas, symphonies, and of course, the highlight, Kadebe. In 2015, Zoo and Manfred organized a very memorable road trip through Germany in a huge black rented van. Zoo designed and printed custom road trip t-shirts for the kids. And we had a group chant when we needed to make sure everyone was present and not lost. We still say that with our kids sometimes. We also had a fun trip together to Cinque, Terre, to Cinque Terre in Italy, while our four daughters went to a Czech summer camp together. She organized it all, and it was a lot of fun. But the trips that will now remain the most vivid in my mind are the longer working vacations she took the past couple of years to Massachusetts during COVID. When she arrived at the airport, she would be radiating a big smile, wearing a bold and colorful outfit, like last fall, it was a hot pink leather jacket. Wow. Um, I enjoyed those trips so much because they weren't so rushed as a regular vacation can be when you only have one week to pack a lot of fun in. Every, each evening after work, we had time to spend together. We had breakfast every morning, her eyes shining with energy, not tired like mine. We would cook together, share recipes, have drinks on our balcony, take beautiful beach and marsh, marsh walks. On the weekends, we would try to do longer trips. These trips didn't require as much planning or expense as a regular vacation, but allowed for more quality time in some sense. Last trip, we had a fantastic trip to Portland, Maine, where we drank amazing mezcal margaritas um, and ate lots of great food. For Zoo, that meant pork belly, clam chowder, pork belly, clam chowder, over and over, wherever she could get it. Um, she was with us in Boston for two months before she died, and we had such a nice time. Long, sunny, hot days, lots of time on our pretty balcony overlooking the pond, drinking margaritas or Caribbean painkillers, she loved being out there. We went to a music festival, hung out with Eva and Rohir, our friends from Oxford who were visiting too, and had a fire for summer solstice. I am very grateful to her boss at Deutsche Telekom for allowing her to take these working vacations during COVID to be with us. These memories are so important to me and my mom, um, now that Susanna is gone. One of the last things we did together will stay with me forever. 
we had an ultimate perfect beach day. So these ultimate perfect beach days don't happen very often. What are they? The weather has to be perfect and really hot. So hot that you can swim a hundred times, even in the freezing cold water, which we have in Massachusetts at Creighton Beach. And it has to be low tide, so the beach is just really big and wide, and you have to go on a really long walk, and you have to get sand everywhere. And you have to have no plans in the evening, no rush, so you can just stay as long as possible. They only happen like once a year if you're lucky, and we happen to have one of those together just before she left. I am truly devastated by her death. She had big plans and big ideas for the trips we could take in the future. Zuzana did more in those 61 years than many people do in a longer lifetime. She craved intensive experiences, and that is what she got. Rest in peace, dear sister. I will miss you very much. I love you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you all so much for coming. It's really an honor. And my father just told me we're kind of short on time, so I decided not to just do a little yeah, speak as I go, but just I wrote down a few thoughts that I want to share with you. So this year has been the best and the worst year of my life. Best because I got my own autonomy, gave it to myself as a person, and I think I have a vague idea of who I want to be when I grow up. And I made the love of my life, but today also marks 68 days since I lost my mother to a very tragic accident, and not a day goes by when my heart doesn't hurt. I'm not one to be very vocal about my personal struggles in this way to the people around me, but if this period of time has taught me anything, is that sharing these hardships with the people around us is so important. It takes a lot of strength to allow people to look into ourselves. So today, I just want to say a few words, with very some short phrases to speak to you about the things my mom loved. I do not really trust myself to talk about too many memories. It really hurts. Mm -hmm. And also, I lose a lot of the details when I sit to write about them. I'm trying to hold on to every moment, and every moment slips through my hand. So many beautiful memories, going to operas, and now I'm see concerts, memories of traveling, cities passing by, the crunch of caramel in our teeth in Holland, night spent dancing with Teresa until 3 a.m., laughing so hard the ground melts and welcomes our tired bones. The taste of gin clinging to our tongue in strained worlds, wrinkles creasing your face into a story. The movie, touring horse at the Ben Valley, mom braiding Teresa's hair, me braiding hers. New words in check, finding a home in the finding a home in the mouth. So many ideas, so many business plans, so many new sounds. Listening to Parmen Jam and Beethoven loud in the car. Eyes always bright despite all the clouds. Legs that know how to walk the roughest roads. Hands that welcome life in all its contours. The smells of garden fires trailing wherever we go. A heart so full of love, she spills joy onto everyone I knew. I have an immense gratitude for so many things that she taught me and her curiosity. I look back and realize that the things I loved about mom are now even more pronounced. She was so fiercely unapologetically herself. I cannot comprehend anything at the moment, as you can imagine. All I can say is I'm going to try to be brave for all of us. And um, I just wonder and wonder, what if I had known her for a few more years or a few less? And I have a sense that a lot of time is lost. And time is something we don't really consider a lot as a sort of parameter to the story. Um, my sister Teresa and I also feel a lot of guilt that we didn't do certain things, anger at ourselves. I heard too, all of these emotions in a whirlwind. Why did she have to leave us so soon? We left behind so many unfinished conversations and ideas. We were constantly bumping off ideas to each other, things we started talking about, things we had so much to learn from, things that would have made a little more sense if we had had the time that we were promised um, Mom is the only person I'm faced by what happens in my life and the person who got every single screenshot and we shared so many thoughts with each other. She was my best friend. 
but also I realized what a glorious gift um, that she was my mother and I could have never imagined having a nun in your life was the biggest blessing and then I lost her. Um, I cannot comprehend much as I said right now, especially consider the, considering the conditions in which this happened, this tragic accident. But something I want all of you guys to know is that mom died alive in her experiments and in her adventures and she really wanted all of us to be really happy and on the way of discovering um, and on a continuous process of development. And I hope all of us here can satisfy her. Thank you so much. <coughs> um, I'm going to very shortly present everyone who comes so that you understand who, who the person is. Um, so next up is Jürgen, brother-in-law. Jürgen? Yes. Ja, ich bin Ich bin der bayerische Teil der Familie genauso wie Manfred aus dieser internationalen Gesellschaft, die Susanna zum großen Teil mitgebracht hat. Ähm was, was für mich das Wesentliche an Susanna war, oder wir haben uns auch abgesprochen, das war, sie war ein Mensch, sie war eine Menschenfreundin. Und da spielt es keine Rolle, woher, wohin, warum und wieso. Es zeigte sich manchmal im praktischen Detail, wenn wir irgendwo essen waren und wir waren, waren bezahlt und saßen im Auto und dann hat Susanna, ist ihr noch eingefallen, sie muss die Leute am Nebentisch noch was fragen. Aber am Anfang waren wir etwas, ach, was machen die da, aber später wussten wir, naja, Susanna ist halt so. Und hat sich auch für den Menschen interessiert. Man merkt das auch heute. Ich denke, wir sind mit etwa 17 Ländern momentan vernetzt, glaube ich, insofern. Uh, geht mein Gruß, wo ist denn die Kamera eigentlich hier? Mein Gruß an Toshio nach Japan. Uh, ist Abel auch dran? Wahrscheinlich nicht. Aber falls Abel dran ist, nach Vanuatu. Uh, diese Vielfalt, die sich immer auch bei uns im, im Hause meiner Schwiegereltern abspielte. Uh, leider lebt nur noch meine Schwiegermutter. Diese Vielfalt, sie waren immer froh und haben immer erzählt, welche Nationen da waren und wie viel, wer schon wieder woher kam. Ähm, es waren auch manchmal München dabei, Erwin. <lacht> äh, ähm, es war eine Vielfalt. Und äh, diese Vielfalt der Vernetzung, wenn wir uns jetzt vorstellen, 15 Länder, wer weiß, wie viele Nationen da dabei sind, das haben wir aufgegeben. Zu eruieren. Wenn wir uns jetzt alle vernetzt zusammen in die Vergangenheit begeben, machen wir einen Sprung zusammen in die Vergangenheit. Und ich mache jetzt keinen Fehler. Es geht um den Juni 1991. Stimmt es? Hochzeit? Juli. Okay, ein Monat zu früh gesprungen. Das konnte ich einen Monat weiter. Ich durfte Manfred und Susanna fotografieren. Ich war damals stolzer Besitzer einer Nikon, äh, einer analogen Nikon, wenn noch jemand weiß, was das ist. Und das hat auch zu diesen, man sieht es jetzt leider schlecht, Verwerfungen geführt. Ich musste die Dias 1 kennen. Es ist am Vortag in dem wunderschönen Schlosspark in Dachau. Wir haben einen Spaziergang gemacht und haben schon mal geschaut, wo machen wir denn am nächsten Tag die Hochzeitsfotos. An diesem Foto fallen diese wunderschönen, langen, blonden Haare von Susanna auf. 
Am nächsten Tag sah sie so aus. Wir hatten nämlich zu Hause verschiedene Nationen, einen Neuseeländer, der Friseur war. Der hat ihr in der Früh die Haare geschnitten. Sie wollte das. Ähm, ähm, Mariam hat ja, glaube ich, die Fingernägel gemacht. Die, weil damals hieß es noch Persien, durfte man noch sagen. Äh, äh, der Blumenstrauß stammt von meiner Schwiegermutter aus, aus dem Garten. Da hat sie drauf bestanden. Ähm, wir kennen alle Susanna und ihre Liebe zu Farben. Ich, das ist das Original in Farbe. Ich äh, habe es versucht, ein bisschen noch herzurichten. Es war ein wunderschöner, warmer Tag. Manfred hatte noch ein paar Haare mehr. Ich hatte noch ein bisschen Bauch weniger. Also die Bewegung. Es hat so viel Spaß gemacht. Und was dann auch immer so schön war. Susanna hatte so ein herrliches Lachen. Ich weiß nicht, bin, das war dann immer so spontan und äh, ging los. Ja, das sind meine Erinnerungen so ein bisschen an die Sache. Ganz lieben Dank, Jürgen. Uh, next up ist Anne, Relative Landlady in Tübingen. Ja, ich knüpfe an dem an, was Jürgen gerade gesagt hat. Nämlich vor kurzem war Manfred bei uns in Tübingen und er hat dann unser Haus nochmal besichtigt, weil er ja damals als Student bei uns gewohnt hat. Das sind Großcousinen und Großcousin, nur damit sie mich einordnen können. Und dann hat er dieses Glöcklein entdeckt. Dieses Glöcklein steht seit der Hochzeit von Susanna und Manfred bei uns auf dem Kamin. Und es war eine wunderschöne Tradition, die ich damals kennenlernen durfte, nämlich das war die Idee, so wie ich mich erinnere, von Susanna, dass immer die Gäste, wenn sie klingeln, das Brautpaar sich küssen muss. Ich habe heute das Klingeln nicht zugelassen oder will es nicht zulassen als Erinnerung an Susanna. Und die, unsere Kinder, auch die Kinder von Jürgen und Gerlinde, die waren ja alle damals noch klein, die haben mit Freude diese Glocken gesucht auf den Tischen und haben gebimmelt, damit das Brautpaar sich küssen muss. Und das gelang natürlich nicht immer, weil die waren ja auch so beschäftigt. Und ähm, auch heute haben wir diese Glocke auf unserem Kamin in der Tradition der glücklichen Tage. Sie klingelt ab und zu mal. Wir haben also diese Glocke als Hausglocke. Wenn alle zusammenkommen müssen, dann klingeln wir mit dieser Glocke. Und ich möchte das einfach hier mit euch, ich bin sehr dankbar dafür, dass ich das so mitnehmen durfte, weil das ein Zeichen dafür ist, die glücklichen Tage, die uns begleiten im Leben und die uns auch immer wieder an diese Situation erinnern. Vielen Dank. Ganz lieben Dank, Anne. Äh, wer, wer, Neighbor? Ich habe in der Zeit, die wir uns kannten, uns gegenseitig geholfen. Sie hat mir mein Englisch verbessern helfen. Ich habe ihr versucht, mit ihrem Deutsch zu helfen. Ich habe deshalb auch das in Englisch jetzt vorbereitet, weil es einfach für mich die Sprache war, in der ich mit ihr gesprochen habe. Our friendship has grown over a long time. It's like the kids. He grows older together. And exchange experiences in a special space of familiarity and honesty. Susanna is the one of the few people who made me be feeling home in Berlin. Whether meeting with the children, with our dogs, whether skiing, walking, grilling, or club dinner having at the houses, Halloween or Thanksgiving, it took place with Susanna in an open space. Friends and guests were always welcome. I won't hear her calling me Verushka anymore, no rolling laughter as we heard before, and no beeping sounds when it got really funny. She had shut me, she had such a good smile and laughter. Susanna was colorful, thoughtful, driven by the desire for knowledge and technology, simply got involved in many things and in many people. She was so spontaneous, diverse, 
curious and great. I often get feeling me born. My sister said too. Without her, there would not have been happening like drum courses with the girls on uh, Penflower Berg on Sunday mornings. No hours of walk through the zoo, no nocturnal driving through the Czech Republic without a map and no mobile phone reception. I could just follow the lights of her car in front of me. No night walks through Taipei to find rare restaurants we never found. There were these nice, intense conversations with her about our well-being, our work, about colleagues, about women and men, about technology, and about anything else we just got our mind on. We made new plans to start over. Just now the children had grown up. We let ourselves drive into opportunities, and we wanted to spend much more time. After we both had spent the last month a special time with our moms, only writing and calling each other. We met spontaneously the evening on the 12th of August. And then we met us. We enjoyed the evening. We stayed, we played pool, we drank wine, and talked a lot. Our farewell at the subway station took a while. None of us wanted to leave, but it was late, the planned trip ahead. So we finally hugged and kissed, and we had no idea that that would be the last farewell. I'm very happy that I got these hours with Susanna. I haven't gotten used to time without her. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next one is Barbara. Susanna, du fehlst. Du fehlst uns, du fehlst mir. Es fehlen deine Lebensfreude, dein ansteckender Optimismus, das Interesse, Neues auszuprobieren. Deine Begeisterung für Kunst, Theater und Kino wandern. Zehn Stunden sich Jonasons Stadt in den Kammerspiel oder den ganzen Mauerweg zu Fuß. Das interessierte dich. Davon ließ ich mich gerne anstecken. Die Freundschaft mit Susanne war ein doppeltes Geschenk, weil sie doppelt gelang. Als zwei Paare und zwischen ihr und mir. Zuerst gab es Manfred und Erwin, die zusammen in München Abitur machten. Nach einigen Semestern an der LMU kam ich dazu. Und dann erzählte Manfred nach einer Konferenz, er habe jemanden Besonderen kennengelernt. Und wir lernten Susanne kennen in einem Café am Wiener Platz. Wir feierten die Hochzeit in Dachau mit Brautentführung und Manfred zog mit einer Laterne los, um die Braut zu finden und auszulösen. Eben wir natürlich. Was uns verband, war Silvester. Über 30 Jahre lang verbrachten wir fast jedes Silvester zusammen. Zuerst in Boston und New York City, einmal in Ulm und in Berlin, aber meistens bei uns in München. 30 Jahre blickten wir zusammen zurück auf das alte Jahr, nach vorn auf das, was kommen mag. Wir freuten uns zusammen über die Geburt unserer Kinder, bestaunten ihre ersten Worte in drei Sprachen und Schritte, ihr Interesse an Musik und Design. Besonders in Erinnerung sind mir ein kleines Konzert, das Lydia und Manfred einmal mit der Geige gespielt haben, und ein neuer Spaziergang mit Kindern und roten Schlitten durchs Murnauer Holz. Später sprachen wir davon, wie schwierig es ist, wieder loszulassen und auch wie schön, euch zunehmend selbstständig zu erleben. An manchen Abenden kamen Freunde und ihre Themen, Projekte dazu. Freunde, die wir teils unabhängig voneinander an der Uni kennengelernt haben und die auch heute persönlich oder online da sind. Susanne, wir kommen zusammen durchs Leben gehen. Thank you very much. Birgit? Birgit is the neighbor. Susanne. Hello, everyone. 
can you hear me? Um, I'm Susanna's friend, Birgit. Um, and I think it is uh, just impossible to honor her sufficiently in three minutes, but I will try it. Um, I, I try to, to share what comes into my mind when I think of her now. Susanna spent a lot of time with me when the family lived very close to our house in Zehlendorf, just opposite our house, I have to say, and we had more than 10 years together. She was the reason I fell in love with Berlin so quickly and so deeply. What comes to my mind when I think of her is the openness, which means the openness to ideas, but in particular, the openness to people, to everyone. Susanna um, was the one who showed me the hidden parking spots, the nice little restaurants where I could get cheap food, which was homemade, and she wanted really me to, to know where it is, uh, where it was. Um, she uh, also the places for, for little adventures, also with our families. She showed me, so uh, she was just there. She made it easy for me to feel at home in, in this town, in this huge town with many, many people. And uh, she was um, better than all other Berliners together. I'll always remember the endless hours we spent walking my friend Ferdi, her dog. We shared a deep love for nature, for dogs and for families. So we had a lot of topics. We covered almost every topic <laughs> I can think of on our long walks, uh, spending a great deal of, of time with work issues and our families, ups and downs, of course. Um, we, had, we had other highlights on top. I still see us skiing in the Czech Republic with our families um, many times. And of course, my first cup of coffee in Paris was with Susanna in the sunny street cafe. And um, yeah, we visited a few museums there with Manfred also. Of course, we worked there and yeah, we explored some neighborhoods, had a spontaneous picnic in the supermarket. <laughs> um, I, I'm very thankful for the intense, terrific time we, we spent I, I just I just had to decide that for me she is still there somewhere sees me takes care of me helps me here and there with a good idea or a sensitive way and I say uh, thank thank you I say to Manfred and Lydia and Teresa for sharing her with us with me so often to spend time with us and yeah we, we loved everything, our, our spontaneous impromptu dinners we had on Friday evenings and all other moments. It's just been a very, very good friend and she still is for me and I'm, I'm happy that I could be here and could see all of you, meet some of you in person for the first time and I, I hope that we can all be stronger together. Thank you. We are uh, almost in the middle of our sharings, and I have two requests to make. First of all, thank you for those who already uh, had their sharings and wonderful memories. Um, we are kind of running short on time, and I would like you to um, somehow comprise your messages to maximum two minutes if, if possible. We already asked for an extended time, but two minutes would be enough. And the second request would be all these beautiful eulogies that you prepared please upload them in one file and send them to the family so that we can save them. It would be really nice because they are beautiful words, beautiful memories, beautiful sharings, and they should not be lost because of, of, of time pressure. We want to hear everyone out and uh, just do not forget after the after this gathering to share these eulogies with the family. Just send them, send them over. Okay, um, we go on with Verle, so Anne. So if people 
we'll send them in that could get them translated. Yes. Ähm, als ich Manfred gesagt habe, ich würde gerne was sagen hier bei dieser Gelegenheit, dann habe ich ihm gesagt, ich könnte das nicht auf Englisch, also ich, ob ich das auf Deutsch machen könnte. Und dann habe ich schon die Stimme von Susanna gehört, laut lachend. But Fela, of course you can do it in English. You're just kidding. Do it in English. So I decided to continue in English to do it and try to do it in English. Um, I met Susanna in Stuttgart while she was working for IBM as a guest scientist, and I was also there for a year. And we had a lot of fun, and having fun was something that I think many of us could share with her. Uh, there was always something to laugh about, and if there was nothing to laugh about, we just figured out something that we could laugh about. Um, Susanna um, was perfect in being Imperfect, not perfect. I mean, what I mean by that is just she was just perfect in being a human being. And I think that is something that really touched all of us, or at least it touched me. Um, I could not, I, I did, I started writing down things that I wanted to say, but then I, always, I figured out that it was always going somewhere because there were so many things to say, so I didn't write down anything. And I tried to memorize those things that I was thinking about while I was driving from Munich this morning to Berlin in the car. It was one thing that I, that I thought, Susanna is a child, a refugee child, and being the child of a refugee child myself, I know what it means to lose your cultural roots and your family and your belongings. And that if you want to get, gain those back, that you need safety. And safety is something that she found with Manfred, she found with her home, with her daughters, with her dog, at the different homes she had in the US and also now in Berlin. She found that with her German family and also with her Czech family, with her sister, her mother, her father. And then it is so tragic that at the moment when she needed safety most, that safety was lost, her safety was lost. And that is so tragic that someone who looked for that or for some, this, is, this was really important for her, this feeling of safety. And Yeah, that's very tragic. And the last thing I just wanted to say is that I built myself a little place of safety in the German Alps last year. And I just want to invite to friends of Susanna, if you ever are in the neighborhood of Rukogen, uh, just let me know. You're welcome and stay in a safe place. Take care, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Thank you, we appreciate your invitation. Amparo, friend and colleague. I will try to compress as much as possible. <laughs> you have said so many nice things about Susanna, so just something that has very much to do with me. I met Susanna for the first time 22 years ago in a business meeting. She was supposed to apply for a place in my team. And just from the very beginning, we had thriving, rambling discussions about culture, art, nature, daily business, wherever, and we became very good friends. Our first private action started as we got pregnant together at the same time. And she invited me to nice to, to do very nice Berlina walks about the lake, uh, around lakes, always saying, you have to do it at least one hour long. Then we can really meditate. I still remember those words, and I try to do it uh, as long as possible when I'm walking around. Just some weeks after she came to our bear com uh, company, Uh, she announced that the next long night of the science was starting, uh, was going to happen. And if we had interest in uh, an exposition about languages that her husband Manfred was involved in. And then my husband, myself, and some uh, Dutch friends of us who were visiting us in Berlin came there, and she introduced us Manfred very proudly, without any pretension, just easygoing as she was always and happy. Since that first common professional moment, we shared many other ones, making interest trips, holidays, together with our families. 
Though we moved to Wiesbaden, we were able to maintain our friendship. We continue making holidays together, and in my bi-monthly trips to Berlin, staying at your place, I was able to share your daily life that night in a free, easygoing, creative way, cooking together, exercising maths, or playing piano, hearing T Teresa's improvisations, or Lydia violin plays that she both loves so much. We had in those last 20 years any kind of conversation from how corporate management has been evolving. I remember I heard from her, from her for the first time, managing uh, upwards, <laughs> very interesting concept, um, till how to develop our kids' natural talents, music interests, always comparing the diverse cultures like American, European, or Asian ones. She shared with me, with us, how proud she was of her Czech origins and her thoughts on what does it mean to be a migrant, a nomadic person, as you mentioned earlier, moving along different cultural scenarios. I appreciate her astonished way of dealing with complex topics, of facing any kind of subject with a wide and open mind, curiosity, rubbing facts, experiences, and psychological aspects all together. Considering all positions and views, trying to find compromises, somehow harmony. Though her theoretical analysis, conclusions, and recommendations were sometimes <laughs> really big contradiction with her paradigms in her real life. We discussed together the many changes that we have experienced in our private and professional lives. And as I got seriously ill, she took care of me with all her energy to create together a network of information and persons that could support me with pragmatism and scientific approach in that hard times without the superficial and fake compassion used so often to face, to face such dramatic topics. And therefore, I'm so sad that I won't be able to accompany her anymore or discuss with her the hard times we, she and we both were facing to find our ways in our next phase of her life. She was a very complex person. I cannot wrap all her facets here. I will miss her and I will miss as immediately as I am visiting, finishing this speech, a discussion with her. Thanks. Natalia. Uh, I think you were very nice to life uh, that touched so many. And I would like to give only a couple of uh, moments uh, about what I'm thinking. When I saw Susanna for the first time more than 20 years ago, my first thought was, what a beautiful woman. How happy a husband must be. <laughs> this was Manfred who saw us. Uh, when you got the position at uh, Cambridge University and SAS. Uh, I got to know Susanna during our uh, walking tours around Berlin and talking about the education of children. And the question that I have never asked before, and she was asking and somehow giving me this question, what does it mean to be a perfect mom? Uh, there are a lot of other questions that uh, I discussed with her, and there are a lot of other moments that we experienced together while uh, spending wonderful winter holidays weeks in the Czech Republic, uh, going there by car when she was driving our car, when I was driving uh, your car without any driving license, uh, going under the uh, terrible snowstorm on an icy highway with a high speed uh, and trying to do some half high speed, trying to do some other things. Um, we had a very intensive talks, and I um, will always think about uh, these days, these weeks, these hours and minutes that um, I had the possibility and happiness to spend with this wonderful person who will always be in my heart and also in the heart of my family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Wolfgang, friend. My plan of effort is going to be 
Geschwister, die aus dem engsten Kreis der Familie äh, und der Freunde hinaus in den unendlich weiten Kreis von Freunden, die sie darüber hinaus hatte, in einem Fall als im besonderen Fall unter den Linguisten. Und das ist die Geschichte ähm, einer Erinnerung an zwei Bemerkungen, die überhaupt nichts miteinander zu tun haben, außer dass sie am selben Abend gemacht worden sind. Und zwar an dem Abend, als ich Susanne kennengelernt habe oder als wir beide uns kennengelernt haben. Ich kann mich nicht genau erinnern, was für ein Jahr es war. Es war in Konstanz. Ich glaube 1990. Manfred wird es wahrscheinlich besser wissen und kann mich dann korrigieren. Ja, auch nicht. Äh, kann mich dann vielleicht korrigieren. Und an die Tagung damals kann ich mich überhaupt nicht mehr erinnern, ehrlich gesagt. Aber ich erinnere mich noch sehr gut an den Abend, als einige Leute, alte Freunde, im Innenhof eines Restaurants in Konstanz zusammengesessen und zu Abend gegessen haben. Das war Arne von Stecho, äh, Manfred natürlich, äh, Arne von Stecho. Ähm, ja, Ede Zimmermann war da bei Jelena Heim beispielsweise. Und bis der Zucker wollte, äh, hat äh, Susanne neben mir gesessen an einer Ecke des Tisches. Und direkt auf der anderen Seite hat der Linguist Edwin Williams gesessen, den wahrscheinlich die wenigsten von Ihnen kennen. Ich werde auch nichts Näheres jetzt darüber sagen. Aber ich habe dann irgendwie im Verlauf des Gesprächs das unweigerlich wie das passiert mit Linguistik angefangen hat, habe ich ihn gefragt, welche der vielen Erkenntnisse der generativen Grammatik eigentlich nicht nur neu, sondern auch lexikonfest, lexikonproof sind. Damit habe ich gemeint, dass sie so gesichert sind, dass man, wie man sich das zum Beispiel von der Enzyklopädie Grammatik her wünscht, also weiß man auch, dass der Mount Everest möglicherweise zehn Meter höher ist oder niedriger, als da steht, aber man denkt, es ist doch einigermaßen verlässlich. Edwin sagt, that's a difficult question. Ich habe gar nichts gesagt und das Gespräch hat sich dann auf andere Themen äh, zugewandt. Aber nach ungefähr einer Viertelstunde hat er gesagt, Parasitic Gaps. Nun könnte ich jetzt hier erklären, was Parasitic Gaps ist, das werde ich aber nicht versuchen. Eine sehr, sehr merkwürdige Konstruktion in der Linguistik, die es bis heute keine gute Lösung gibt. Wir haben das dann nicht weiter thematisiert und ich habe schon gesagt, das Thema, dass das Gespräch hat sich anderen und eigentlich interessanteren Fragen zugewandt, vor allen Dingen mit Susanna. Und als wir dann nach zwei Stunden, vielleicht auch drei Stunden nach Hause gegangen sind und verabschiedet hatten, da hat sich noch einmal zu mir umgedreht und gesagt, unter allen Deutschen, die ich je kennengelernt habe, bist du der am wenigsten Deutsche. Ich weiß bis heute nicht genau, was ich damit gemeint habe, aber ich weiß inzwischen, dass das die Art ist, wie sie mit den anderen Menschen geredet hat. Und ich werde sie leider nicht mehr fragen können. Aber in meiner Erinnerung sind diese beiden Dinge, Parasity Gaps, ein undeutscher Deutscher, vollkommen verschränkt. Wenn ich an das eine denke, denke ich an das andere. Wenn ich das andere denke, denke ich an das eine. That was very helpful, thank you. Uh, Karen, Karen. Karen? Karen, maybe? Okay. Uh, Anja. Anja. Ich spreche Deutsch, ich entschuldige mich, falls jemand mich versteht. Ja, wir haben uns im Kindergarten unsere Kinder kennengelernt. Wir haben beide zwei Kinder, sie hatte zwei Mädchen und ich hatte zwei Jungs. Und äh, wir haben die Kinder immer gleichzeitig seit 1939 gebracht. Das war so ein amerikanischer Kindergarten in Zellendorf und das war etwa im Herbst 2004. Ja, und da war eine schmale, eine sehr schmale Zufahrt und wir haben unsere Autos da geparkt. Sie hatte ihr Volvo, so ein schönes, großes Auto und ich hatte meine Mikra und ich hatte immer Probleme mit Autofahren. Ich war immer eine schlechte Fahrerin. Ich habe mit Mühe mein Auto geparkt und danach haben wir lange geredet, manchmal eine halbe Stunde, manchmal auch länger und ich weiß gar nicht, worüber wir geredet haben. Aber wir haben so genossen, miteinander zu sprechen, einfach über nichts. Und äh, eigentlich, ich habe Englisch gesprochen. Äh, ich habe kein gutes Englisch, aber sie hat immer zugehört und sie war sehr äh, interessiert. Und sie hat auch mal gefragt, und, äh, wenn sie etwas nicht verstanden hat. Und äh, ja, und einmal war also ein, eine, eine Situation, äh, ich musste meinen jüngeren Sohn, Victor, äh, zu einem Ausflug nach Spandau bringen und ich musste sozusagen mein, meinen Sohn selbst fahren und äh, ich habe gleich verstanden, ich schaffe es nicht, weil ich war so schlecht mit Autofahren und äh, ich habe gesagt, ich schaffe es wirklich nicht, von Zellendorf nach Spandau zu fahren und da hat sie gesagt, ja, kein, kein Problem, ich helfe dir und äh, ich fahre vor, und dafür musste sie auch in die Richtung Spandau 
und äh, sie ist zuerst gefahren und ich hinter ihr und die ganze Fahrt, äh, ja, ich hatte wirklich, das war ein Traum, wie ein Traum, das war mein erstes und letztes Mal, wie ich Autobahn gefahren bin, das war, <lacht> <lacht> sie hatte einfach nie so zwischendurch Zeichen gegeben und als meine Ausfahrt da war, hat sie einfach geblinkt und ich bin rausgefahren und da zu meinem Ziel gelangt und ich habe, ich bin, ja, wirklich bis jetzt dankbar, dass mir damals Mut gegeben hat und, und dass ich das mit viel geschafft habe, um meinen Sohn dahin zu bringen. Ja, vielen Dank. Thank you so much. Uh, Verena? Verena? Verena is a good friend. Hi. Susanna is still on my phone, and the ST for Susanna Teresa as well. Uh, when I could not reach her on the Z phone, I would normally, she would normally call me back on the ST phone. <laughs> and uh, I never really understood which phone was the business phone and which was a private line. Sometimes I wasn't sure if she knew the different numbers. <laughs> uh, Susanna always thought and cared about her two daughters. Um, and um, since we got to know each other uh, more closely during Corona, um, we, our major topic was the motherhood. And um, uh, when, um, since August, uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm just. Um, um, since August 14th, um, I um, I checked all the messages she sent to me, you know, and I, like you did, and I looked in all the videos she sent to me, and um, and one uh, just came to my focus, and I want to share it. So then I had sent me on April fifth um, a photo of herself with Lydia and Teresa, very little and very well dressed on the sides, and um, and it must have been a photo from 10 or 12 years ago and she signed the photo with the following words she said i think letting go of all mom roles is one of the hardest things we have to face uh, we have to we have to face it till death does us apart when i um, got this mysterious line in in april i have not been sure if she wanted to give me like a discreet and clever advice which she did often <laughs> or she had been occupied herself with this kind of thinking about what it meant to be a mother and how to let go you know of the world she has been an inspiration to me and i think to so many of us i admire her friendship to you Lydia, and to Lisa. um i'm sure that the endless amounts of energy and inspiration and pragmatic advice you know, will never let you both go astray. And um, her love and care will never leave you, Teresa and Lydia. And I just want to tell you this because I knew she loved you so much and I'm so sad, you know, uh, for all the time she's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. She gave us an example not to be afraid of new challenges to love adventures and to never give up discovering new things. I miss her very much. Thank you very much. And next we have Kirsty, a dear friend. My connection to Susanna is a musical one. And because of the time restrictions, I won't share my story now in words, but I, I will write it down for you. Um, I believe that music is one of the ways to reach out to other souls, be it here in this room, or on the screen, all over the world, or somewhere unknown to us. But music speaks to every soul. With my Baroque violin, I'd like to play a little improvisation on a prelude by Johann Sebastian Bach.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, you're right. Music and art in general brings people together, and sometimes it's not even need. You don't even need words for that. Um, I before I close the, the gathering and before I invite you all to have a bite and and a drink, uh, I would like to explain a little bit my presence here. Um, I am, uh, uh, the family didn't want to make something pompous and formal, and I hope we reach that. I hope this, you take this at home with you as a beautiful gathering uh, where we share nostalgic, fun, and beautiful feelings. Um, I am a moderator, but I'm not here as a moderator. I'm here because of Susanna. Um, I am a poet, and I am an ambassador for multicultural exchange. These are my two passions that Susanna really loved about me. Um, I started with a poem in her honor uh, because she cared about my uh, sensitivity and about my writings on, on, on feelings and human, the beauty of human beings. But especially she liked my second passion to bring people together, to bring cultures together. And I realized through all these sharings um, that it is exactly what I felt about her while bringing people together and creating certain so, certain outlets for, for migrants or people to come together, international people, international communities to be together, um, and not 
pick up people in restaurants, which some, sometimes I also do. If I find an interesting person, I will go to that person and try to converse with that person to see uh, the interesting facts about them. Um, she loved that. And what you do not know um, is that Susanna, she also did not know, is that in the last year, she was so dedicated and so loyal uh, to what we do here, and especially in this place uh, where I organize uh, these events and these spaces for all the people to come together. She won the coolest fan award, which I know sounds a little bit silly to call, but she was really the coolest person, the coolest fan that we could have in the entire community. And the most loyal fan who would always help, would always find somebody, would always bring someone, or who would always connect me with somebody to make this community bigger and better. So she belonged to the artistic community for at least two years and a half. And she didn't know that she would receive this award. The, the award was uh, in October. It was uh, um, given post-mortem to her daughter. Um, but I'm sure she would have loved she would have loved that and she would have appreciated that because she put a lot of a lot of uh, um, good feelings and a lot of energy in, in, in this space uh, and in all the cultures that she met throughout throughout our gatherings. So this is why I'm here and this is why I kind of um, moderated a little bit the event for, for the family. And um, I would like to end with one quote, which I think it's really, um, it goes without saying. I didn't know how to set the tone for today, but then I thought I will let it be because you yourselves will set the tone for the entire gathering with your feelings, with your memories, with your sharings. And I think we managed to have a beautiful combination of, of nostalgia, love, a little bit of fun, and a little bit of all the things that Susanna really appreciated in her life. And I thought the most beautiful quote to end um, this gathering uh, would be from uh, Tuxedidas, the history of the Peloponnesian War. And it says, what we leave behind is not what is engraved in stone, but what is woven in the lives of others. And we really like to thank you all in the name of the family and in the name of the dearest ones for being part of Susanna's journey in this grand adventure we call life. We thank you all for the love. Please have a bite, have a drink. And this, we can still, still stay here until 13.45. As a 15 or 50. Thank you all. Vielen Dank, Soa. Ich möchte mich auch nochmal wirklich sehr herzlich bedanken für alle, die hier sind für alle, die, die hier was präsentiert haben. Ich möchte mich entschuldigen, dass es mit dem Livestream anfangs nicht so ganz geklappt hat. Äh, ich, es gibt noch einige ähm, äh, Beiträge, die wir jetzt noch abspielen könnten. Wir haben aber die Zeit nicht und wir warten auch noch ein bisschen. Aber ich verspreche, dass wir alles auf, auf publik machen werden, sodass man das sehen kann. Wir haben eine, eine Memorial Site bei Everlast. Äh, das werde ich auch noch rumschicken. Da kann man auch noch noch weitere Kommentare und Bemerkungen, Erinnerungen und so weiter an Susanna ähm, äh, äh, uns allen gewissermaßen mitteilen. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Thank you. You can clap. You can clap. Ja, ja, mach mehr, mach mehr. Das ist ganz vorsichtig.